is the Radeon HD 5770 still good GPU in 2018? Well guys, that's the question we will be answering today. Now, first off, the card does support DirectX 11, thus we can pretty much play any game on the market right now, and it also supports an Ethernet port for whenever you need Ethernet through your GPU. But anyways, onto the games! Alright, let's go ahead and start off with our first game today, and that will be Overwatched. Released about two years ago, this is a game that I do enjoy testing just because it's fun to play and in general runs pretty well on almost every single card that I've tested. And the HD 5770 is no different. The average FPS was about 70, which is, oh, it's right above that 60, which you need if you have a 6 years monitor. And the 1% and the 0.1% were also above 60 the whole entire time. Overall, it was very stable and if you're playing this game competitively, you can actually do it on this card, though at a very low resolution. As 720p is. You know, it used to be a very high resolution, but you know, times change and eventually, in a few years, everyone will have an 8K monitor, but you know, that's just how it is. So hey guys, if you're looking for stability and very smooth frames, it is possible in this card, though you will have to drop your resolution and your detail quite a bit. Now, if you do try and do 720p with the high settings, you are still going to get above 60, but you are no longer getting above 60 on the 1% and 0.1%, 1%, 1 there we go. Anyways, it's definitely not as perfectly smooth as the other one, but it's still nonetheless playable and you're still getting a bit more detail. Now, the alternative, of course, is instead of just bumping up the detail, you keep the detail out low and instead you turn the resolution up as I did right here. And that still gives you above a 60 FPS average. And you know what, honestly, I kind of take that over the high details just because I prefer a high resolution instead of, you know, better details. But you know, that's just my personal preference. Some people like better graphics, some people like better resolution. Personally, if I can run 4K, at like low compared to like running 1080p at high, I'm, I choose the 4K anytime. Anyways, let's move on to our next game and that is Warhammer Vermintide 2, a game that is free to play right now on Steam as of this video, but probably by the time you watch it, it won't be anymore. So yeah. So how well did it perform? Well, according to the all-knowing text that is on screen, it performed pretty decently. I did get an average of 71.2 using the in-game benchmark, by the way. Thank you to games that have an in-game benchmark, it makes my life a whole lot easier. So I managed to create my own benchmark and then rerunning the thing perfectly almost every single time. That's not fun in a lot of games, but you know, this game made it easy. So we're going to give a thumbs up to this game just for that. And it's also fun. I did enjoy playing it. I didn't play a lot of it, but I did play enough to have a good time, which is all that matters at the end of the day of games, huh? Right, 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 right. Anyways, whoa. All right, let's keep talking about the forms here. Um, the 1% and 0.1% weren't exactly perfect. Uh, yeah, it's not exactly the most stable thing on the planet. You're going to have a lot of dips going up and down, but... Nonetheless, it's still nice seeing a game that was just released this year that is playable. Now, bumping up the settings just to medium. Notice we were at the lowest, it goes low, then medium. Uh, the FPS tanks. And it tanks, 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 tanks really down. Not like a tank, it doesn't, it's not strong like a tank, it's very weak. Like, tanks doesn't go down. And in go down, we mean by a lot. Literally, the FPS got cut in half, actually more than half. So yeah, if you're gonna go ahead and play this game, I strongly recommend not increasing the detail but keeping it the lowest. And as an example, look at that. When we bumped it up to 1080p, yet retaining the lowest amount of detail, we still have not exactly 60, but a much higher frame rate than we had at 720p medium. There seems to be something in this game where for some reason, if you just dip down, or not exactly dip down, but no, increase actually, there we go, that's what I was looking for. If you increase the detail, it seems to absolutely take the FPS, yet changing the resolution doesn't cause as much of an effect. I can't tell if it's the shadows or something else, but there is something that just is a part of that medium detail setting that just absolutely destroys the game. So overall, was it playable? Uh, yeah, if you're willing to go at 720p, then this game will run absolutely well, and you could play it on a car that is 9 years old by now, by the way. So, let's go ahead and move on to our next game. And of course, our next game today is Fortnite. The reason why we're including Fortnite is because probably most of you are playing it. And if you're not playing it, well, good for you. It's probably better for your mental health. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and talk about the actual performance of Fortnite. So, at 720p low, as we've done in all the other games, it is running absolutely great. Look at that, we're right above 60. The 1% and 0.1%, they're all over the place, but you know what? All that matters is that it's playable and somewhat, and at 720p, we can achieve that. By the way, if you see a John Wick, get rid of him. It just makes you feel better inside for a few seconds. Oh, all right, let's go ahead and move on. 720p medium, how well does the game work? Well, you don't get 60 anymore, and that is a shame. I do enjoy 60. You know, I did used to play console, though. I understand some people like 30, some people can play a 30. Personally, can I play a 30? No, I can't. But 46, well, it's in between, and you gotta compromise at some point. 
Now the one percent zero one percent. Well, they're you know zero point one percent. It's a little low, but hey guys, nonetheless, it is. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it if you're gonna actually play this game. Um, one thing I noticed with this card is you can bump the resolution up higher with it, you can move the resolution around, but I found certain details seem to absolutely tank the FPS, and I'm not sure if that's the card's issue with um, shadows. I know this is the first, this is one of the first cards to include Tessellation in terms of the Tessellation that was, that is part of DirectX 11. Um, but yeah, something just happens whenever you uh, bump the details up, it just tanks the FPS. For instance, look at this, 1080p low, it actually gets higher FPS than the medium settings did, which is SF20p bump. Whatever. Anyways, let's move on to the greatest disappointment that I had with this card, and that is Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Now, as we've seen beforehand, as long as we lower the settings a lot on most of the games, we can achieve a smooth 60. But when it comes to Rainbow Six Siege, that's not possible, it seems. Even at 1024x768, we were not able to achieve a smooth 60. Instead, we got about 47.8 at the lowest possible settings for our average. Disappointing. And when we bump up the resolution, because now we're at 1280 by 720, which is pushing much more pixels. We're of course getting a lower frame rate, but look at that. All the other games are doing 60 at 720p, but Siege, I don't know. There's just some kind of a graphical feature or something else. It just strains this card a little too much, and it's not able to do it. Yes, the card supports DirectX 11, and yes, it's nine years old, and yes, it can run most titles, but Siege, well, Siege is a, Siege is a, a unique case. You know, it just, it just, it's actually older than most of the other games I tested, by the way, but still just has issues with this card. And, uh, yeah, guys, there's not much you can really do about it, as I'll show off in a few seconds. But first, we also tried 1080p out. Why? I don't know. It doesn't run. But you might as well show it, just because some people might like that. There you go. So, hold on a second. We overclocked the card. So, did the frame rate actually improve? Uh, quite the opposite, actually. It actually got worse. Now, I'm not sure if this is a power issue or if this was a memory issue. This was tested multiple times. And every time in this benchmark, the frame rate actually went down. I'm not sure exactly why. But anyways, share your thoughts in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you can subscribe. There's a, there's a red button just down there. Just, just press it. There you go. 